When you look at high yields right now, Eric, what do you see? You know, we still like the market. There's been uh, a lot of press out there talking about, you know, whether or not there's, you know, some sort of a issue with high yield and, you know, could default rates start to rise up? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we frankly don't see it. If you look at the, you know, percentage of distress names in the marketplace, you look at the... Well, there's ability. not much there right now. There's not. There's not. And frankly, as well, the difference between this and last cycles is the ability to refinance at lower rates. Uh, even though leverage is ticked up, the interest costs are actually pretty low, and so the liquidity is pretty strong, and so we don't see a lot of triggers over the near term to really see that default rate rise up. Okay, but that's, that's what's happening now. What if, when we get that first Fed rate hike, Janet Yellen and the other members of the FOMC say, you know what, this isn't just the first rate hike, you're going to see another, and we feel pretty good about the direction of the economy. If that's the case, if the language is growth bullish, and inflation bullish, there's going to be a sell-off in fixed income, and it's going to hit high yield hard. You know what? There might be a short-term sell-off, but there's this fixation with the, the Fed funds rate, which I think is a little bit misplaced. Mm -hmm. uh, again, historically, you look at the high yield market and the performance during periods of rising rates, and short-term, you can see an impact, you know, outflows from mutual funds and some price declines, but longer term, yeah. you see an adjustment. Spreads tend to cushion you from that rate rise. You think a rate hike has already been priced into high yield? I think it's different in 2013 when you had the taper tantrum. Yeah. People were surprised by that announcement. Uh, in this case, I think it's very well forecasted. So if it doesn't matter when the rate hike happens, it matters what the path of the hike is. What is the path you anticipate? The path and the steepness yes. and the timing of that. And so the I think slope, at this point, if you will. based on the data we've seen, is it likely they raise sometime in you know, September time period? Yes. but. After that, it seems like it could be fairly. So where gradual. do we end 2016, and how does that affect your high yield strategy? Like, I mean, whether we end up at you know 50, 75 basis points, frankly, it doesn't impact our strategy at all. The bigger question is, at that point in time, at the end of the year, what's the outlook for 16? Are we seeing the Fed funds kind of stabilize at those levels, or continue to move higher over the course of the year? So you make the point that we have seen how high yield performs in periods of rising interest rates. We could go back to 2004, for example. Yeah. But what we haven't seen is how high yield performs in a bond bear market because high yield didn't exist the last time we had a bond bear market right prior to 1980 what do you think is going to happen if in fact we enter a prolonged bond bear market that is the mirror image of the 30-year bond bull market that's kinda coming to an end yeah, again when you say a bond bear market you know, we're starting from levels of you know two percent on the 10-year if you're thinking about going to 3%, I think you can still perform relatively well. Now, if you're saying, well, rates are going up to 5 6%, uh, that would be very impactful to the high yield market. Sure. However, what's the probability of that given where inflation is, economic growth? We just don't see it. And frankly, you look globally in terms of where the overall drivers for rates are, there's just not that impetus to see that level of rates that can really drive negative performance from high yield and other asset classes. Uh, Eric, what happens in high yield energy? There was a lot of volatility when oil sold off. What's going to happen in the next 12 months? You know, we've been actually fairly bullish on high yield energy. I mean, it sold off dramatically in the fourth quarter. You know, with the drop in oil, we've seen some stabilization. How quickly did you go back in? Uh, we've been in really since the second half of last year. So we started buying in even prior to the big drop in the fourth quarter. So you year. suffered a bit of a mark-to-market -market loss for a couple of months, and we then did. you made it back pretty we fast. We did. I mean, the nature of high yield is it's a somewhat illiquid asset class at times, and yeah. so you can take advantage of that. And when people are selling, when there's panic in the marketplace, if you have a longer-term view, you can take advantage. Speaking of illiquidity, do you worry about how fixed income assets are going to perform uh, you know, whenever we hit that next, period, that next market dislocation? Yeah, there's been a lot of focus about broker-dealers and the pullback in the yep. inventory due to regulatory concerns. And that's true. However, what we found is during periods of stress since the financial crisis, you have new buyers that step in. And so hedge you, funds. Hedge funds, distressed players, folks that can trade between equities and credit. And so what you have is you have greater price moves and sometimes more violent, but you do have liquidity. They put in a floor. Yeah, they put in the floor. And so if you need to sell, you can sell. It'll be a lower price point. So the key is can you have enough liquidity cushion in your account so you can take advantage of those opportunities and then hopefully sell down when the market's frothy. All right, Eric, we thank you very much. Thanks Eric Takahai is the senior vice president at Franklin Templeton.